Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL online course on electric vehicles. So, in last 4 weeks, we have covered different topics pertaining to electric vehicles. So, let us uh, try to summarize uh, what we have discussed in these 4 weeks. So, basically uh, we were able to complete uh, the discussions on two broad topics under electric vehicles. In uh, week 1 and week 2, we have discussed introduction to electric vehicles and in week uh, 3 and week 4, uh, we have discussed the topic of uh, vehicle dynamics in detail. So, under the uh, topic of introduction to EV, we have covered uh, various subtopics. So, introduction to EV is a important topic for discussion, since it gives a overall exposure to someone who is new to this area. And since this area is uh, emerging as an important research area and uh, it is very likely that most of the vehicles uh, on the road in future will be electric vehicles. So, what we have tried is uh, to give a overview such that anybody who is uh, interested to uh, know more about EV should at least understand the breadth and the scope of uh, this domain. So, an electric vehicle has a lot of uh, sub domains and we will we'll try to uh, give a glimpse of each of them. So, we have started uh, with a discussion on historical background in initial lecture. So, some of us uh, may be thinking that electric vehicle is a, a recent phenomena, maybe 2 or 3 decades, but in reality that is uh, not so. So, in that discussion uh, we have seen that uh, the first uh, electric vehicle uh, was made way back in 1880s and uh, uh, there were lot of manufacturers uh, who were uh, developed commercial vehicles by 1900. So, we have some, so we have seen some figures uh, such as 42,000 uh, electric vehicles on US road by 1900 and uh, they were able to achieve performance of uh, 100 plus kilometer per hour top speed and range also uh, 100 plus kilometers. So, it was one of the mainstream uh, mode of transport during that time and uh, as discussion uh, progressed we have seen that because of the emergence of IC engine vehicles by 1920-1925, the electric vehicles uh, started to disappear. We all know that uh, electric vehicle uh, has a disadvantage that it has to be charged regularly and we need a charging port and a charging power supply which is not available everywhere. And on the other hand, IC engine can be fueled by uh, gasoline and other fuels anywhere. So, that has promoted IC engine vehicles as mass vehicles during 1930s and 1940s. So, EV started to disappear and as we discussed a uh, lot of IC engine based vehicles uh, started to appear uh, and 
therefore, they are started uh, creating a lot of emission problems and uh, many cities like London and California have seen worst kind of smoke and this has prompted governments to take decisions to bring back the EV again in large percentage uh, to the road such that uh, the problem due to pollution can be addressed. So, uh, so the first EV uh, that came as a very successful uh, EV was GM EV1. So, the design of GM EV1 was very perfect and it has a low drag coefficient of 0.19. Secondly, it, uh, the vehicle performance is also extremely good. But uh, as mentioned, uh, you know, due to the lack of charging infrastructure and uh, range anxiety, uh, it has uh, didn't carry on as a popular product. However, uh, the hybrid versions uh, became popular because the vehicle owner or the driver does not have to worry about the range and the vehicle can be fueled by petrol or diesel, but the operation can be uh, more electric. So, uh, hybrid electric vehicles uh, such as Toyota Pyrus and Honda Insights have picked up and they were popular uh, in around the globe by 2000. Now, in last 20 years, we have seen many uh, electric vehicles uh, which are pure battery electric vehicles which are able to demonstrate extremely uh, good performance even better than IC engine based vehicles. So, vehicles like uh, Tesla, BMW i3 and other uh, pure EVs are very promising and now uh, there is a possibility that EV can become a main mode of transport in the near future. So, in our uh, second discussion which was uh, benefits of using EVs, we have seen uh, the kind of harmful emissions that are produced due to IC engine based vehicles, especially petrol, diesel etcetera. So, this uh, type of uh, vehicles uh, generate uh, a toxic carbon oxide, carbon monoxide, NOx gases and uh, other gases which are very harmful uh, to human health. Especially we have seen uh, the pollution due to particulate matters such as PM 10 and PM 2.5. So, if uh, they are inhaled by human in high quantity, there is a possibility of cancer and even death of uh, many people. So, in one of the surveys done in California in air research board. So, they have seen that around 9000 people die every year due to pollution related health hazards. So, we have also seen that uh, electric vehicles which require electricity as a mode of uh, charge and fueling is available from all kind of energy resources whether it will be oil, gas, coal or even renewable energy. So, in that way it is more uh, versatile while uh, the IC engine based vehicle typically can be charged by energy sources such as oil, gas and coal which are creating lot of health hazards. So, one of the important benefits is that it is a diverse energy vehicle. We have also seen that uh, the efficiency of fuel tank to wheels is 
quite high in EV. So, it is 76 percent and it is very low in the range of 16 percent in IC engine based vehicles. So, in terms of drive time efficiency also electric vehicles are better off compared to IC engine based vehicles. So, in this discussion we have seen also the drawbacks uh, the BV or pure electric vehicle is observing nowadays such as you know the size of the battery which we need to keep uh, in a vehicle to obtain same range as uh, high engine based vehicles. So, the specific energy and specific power uh, of uh, batteries are quite low compared to diesel and petrol. So, which uh, also ask for more batteries and therefore more weight. Charging infrastructure is very important uh, and uh, problem which needs to be addressed to make uh, AEV a successful vehicle. After that uh, we have discussed the uh, different types of EVs and challenges. So, we have seen uh, you know the divisions of EV as pure EV or hybrid EV. So, under pure EV we have uh, vehicles such as battery electric vehicle, fuels electric vehicle, ultra capacitor electric vehicle and ultra fly electric vehicles. Vehicle. And uh, under uh, hybrid electric vehicle we have uh, vehicle such as mild electric vehicle, micro electric vehicle and uh, full hybrid electric vehicle. So, these are the three types of conventional hybrid electric vehicles uh, which are known as micro, mild and full hybrid. And uh, we have some hybrid electric vehicles uh, which are gridable. So, in those vehicles there is a provision to charge the battery via grid interface in addition to filling the petrol or diesel from the filling stations. So, this uh, type of HEVs are known as gradable HEVs and uh, they have two uh, divisions. Uh, so, one is known as plug plug-in hybrid where and the second one is called range extended hybrid electric vehicle. So, plug-in hybrid uh, vehicle uh, is a basically a topology similar to full hybrids where the size of uh, IC engine is uh, higher compared to uh, the battery but on a range extended uh, is a kind of uh, adoption of a pure electric vehicle with a small engine. So, we have also seen uh, you know the, the kind of uh, support of integrated starter generators in terms of uh, vehicle performance. So, we have seen that in uh, micro HEV it can only help to start stop the IC engine and regeneration uh, during braking operation. While the features uh, such as electrical launch and uh, power assist can be added if the vehicle is a mild hybrid vehicle. And when we go for full hybrid many modes are possible. Uh, so, not only start stop, regenerative braking, power resist as well as electrical launch. We can also go for optimization of IC engine fuel economy. So, we uh, so in a full hybrid we have uh, basically three types of main uh, HEVs uh, which are known as series HEV, parallel HEV and series parallel HEV. And we also have complex HEV which is a extension of series parallel HEVs. So, in full hybrid uh, further optimization is possible and 
it's possible to achieve a high fuel economy for IC engine and a battery driven uh, motor such that uh, you get the best performance of the vehicle in terms of range and cost. Later we have seen uh, the topic of uh, motor drive technologies. So we all know that uh, we need to use electrical motor for driving the wheels in all EVs. So it will be a smaller percentage in uh, hybrid electric vehicle, but it will be a sole mode of uh, driving in a pure electric. So we have seen that uh, compared to IC engine, which normally runs at constant speed and it can give uh, roughly constant torque for uh, even variation of uh, some speeds. So for obtaining uh, you know wide uh, vehicle speeds and torques, a variable gear system is required, so which will uh, allow IC engine to give high torque at starting and low speeds at uh, let us say first gear and the vehicle can demonstrate very high speeds with low torque in the higher gear, let us say five, fifth gear. So you require uh, a variable gearbox uh, which is a uh, loss component and inconvenience to the driver also. In comparison to IC engine based vehicle, uh, electrical motor can readily give low speed high torque operation as well as low torque high speed operation without any variable gear. So it has uh, by design those kind of characteristics in motor uh, torque speed uh, graphs. So therefore, we have to go for either no gear or if uh, gear is required, it will be fixed gear. So in that way, it is uh, less uh, lossy as well as is very convenient to the driver. But uh, since uh, the motor has to take all the responsibilities of starting and high speed cruising, now the design of motor is a challenging area and uh, we have to design uh, machines which are high efficiency in both this low speed operation and high speed cruising. So designing such kind of motor is very tricky and it is an important area of research. We have also seen the different kind of motors uh, that are used. So we have seen uh, uh, you know, the popular motors are BLDC motors uh, which are very easy to construct and they are very popular in uh, low power uh, vehicles such as two wheelers and three wheelers. But uh, when you go for slightly higher end or medium end uh, EVs, uh, uh, we generally go for permanent magnet types of uh, machines which are not only high efficient but they provide also high power density. So we have also seen that uh, many new types of motors are emerging uh, where the magnet will be on the stator and uh, we, do, we have uh, saliency on the rotor surface without any winding or permanent magnets such that the construction can be easy. And uh, there are other machines such as uh, sink reluctance motor as well as switch reluctance motor which are researched such that they can be incorporated as a electrical motor for this application. So these motors uh, use uh, no uh, magnets and therefore it is uh, simple to construct and less costly. 
Later we have seen uh, the different types of uh, battery charging technologies uh, that are in popular use. So, there are three kind of charging schemes like normal charging, opportunity charging, uh, then we have DC fast charging. So, various kind of charging schemes we have seen. So, some, uh, some charging schemes can be used at home uh, application where single phase supply is available. But when a high rating vehicle has to be charged, we have to go for three phase system. And when we have to go for very fast charging like quick charging of 20 to 30 minutes, uh, we have to go for DC charging at of very high uh, DC currents. So, such kind of infrastructure is uh, difficult to establish. We have also seen uh, the different types of charging algorithms. So, we have different uh, methods to charge the battery when the supply is there, such so as constant current charging, constant voltage charging, constant current, constant voltage charging, which is a, a kind of a base algorithm for high end algorithms. So, so where the vehicle battery is charged uh, with high current initially followed by uh, slow charging in constant voltage mode. So, CC, CV is kind of uh, algorithm understands the behavior of battery while charging very well. Then we have advanced charging methods uh, such as uh, multi-step charging, etc. So, we have uh, a charging called trickle charging uh, which needs to be uh, given to battery for supporting the losses. So, if your battery is kept idle for some time it will discharge due to self discharge uh, phenomena. So, uh, small current is always given to a battery uh, so that it can be kept at uh, good condition. So, uh, we have also seen uh, you know the methods uh, which are used to manage the batteries uh, which are known as battery management systems. So, Typically, we have lot of cells which are connected in series in parallel to obtain the required energy and current and voltage ratings of the battery pack. So, when these uh, cells are charged and discharged many times, not all the cells will be charged equally and therefore, there is a necessity to keep them in good condition uh, and understand those conditions in real time. So, the parameters such as SOC, SOH, SOP are important parameters which has to be evaluated on a real time basis by uh, measurements of currents and voltages. So, a uh, separate processor will be there which takes care of all these things. So, this we have seen. Later, uh, we have seen uh, a new area uh, which is uh, emerging because of a uh, lot of electric vehicle being charged via utility grid. So, when the scale of uh, electric vehicles is low, it will not affect the power grid, but if there is a lot of electric vehicles which are simultaneously connected to grid, it will put a burden on the power grid. and Therefore, it is always advisable to charge the electric vehicle during uh, light loads conditions of the grid uh, which mostly happens in uh, mid time of the night. So, so at that time uh, there is a surplus power available on the power grid and it is the battery charging can be even helpful to the grid to uh, supports its rating. We have also seen that uh, if a lot of electric vehicles uh, can be combined uh, to a common aggregator or a pool, it can help the grid uh, in many ways such as uh, it can support uh, uh, as we discussed the night time coordinated charging or the it can support the peak power demand uh, during the peak hours uh, while supplying the 
energy stored in the battery. So most of the vehicles will be parked in some kind of place and the batteries are utilized and they can be helped uh, to decrease uh, for supporting the peak power demand during the mid of the day. So we have seen uh, many uh, technologies which are emerging such as vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to grid, vehicle to home and other technologies. So, uh, this electric vehicles can also support power grid uh, in terms of, uh, you know, spinning reserve uh, asset or it can be used for uh, reactive power compensation and many other things. So, we have discussed um, most of these things. So, in the uh, further discussions, uh, we have try to understand the EV subsystems are different kind of EV configurations within a electric vehicle. So, we all know that we have to have a motor uh, with a fixed gear to run the differential which will be connected to driving axle to the wheels. But it is possible to you know have uh, gearless uh, electric vehicles where you do not need any gear. Secondly, it is also possible to have electric vehicle which does not have a differential. But if you do not want to have a differential, we need to operate two motors, so individual motors to each uh, wheels. Let us say if you have a front uh, wheel transmission. So, in that uh, configuration, the two motors operation has to be coordinated such that it can uh, virtually enable differential mode operation. So, when the vehicle has to be turned right or left, one of the motors has to be driven at higher speeds and the other motor has to be driven at lower speeds, so that it provides the torque differential for turning the vehicle without any skidding or driving discomfort. So, we have also seen uh, the type of uh, motors which are embedded in the rim of the wheel. So, there is possible that you have stator windings on the vehicle wheel itself. So, if the rotor is on the rim uh, and uh, so you need to provide a gear to bring the high speed operation of the motor to the low speed requirement of the vehicle. But it is also possible to even remove that planetary gear uh, by having a configuration where the rotor itself is the wheel of the vehicle, means you have to have a outer rotor motor similar to what we have in uh, electric ceiling fans or uh, hub motors. So, we have seen the advantages, disadvantage of each of these configurations and what are the challenges uh, the industry is facing to develop those things and how they are being addressed. We have also seen uh, the energy resources part of uh, EV subsystems. So, we all know that a battery is required to be connected to electric motor for energy supply. But we all know that a single energy source like battery is incapable of providing both the high specific energy and high specific power in a single pack. But these are the requirements uh, of a electric vehicle. We require a high specific power for quick acceleration or pickup uh, during starting, but for good range we require high specific energy. So, we have seen the different modes uh, uh, or ways where two uh, sources are connected in parallel and supporting the energy supply to the motor such as uh, one battery type or uh, let us say a fuel cell has uh, high amount of specific uh, power or ultra flywheel has high amount of uh, specific power or ultra capacitor. So, this can be connected in parallel to the batteries and we can support both the 
लो स्पीड हाई टॉर्क एंड हाई स्पीड लो टॉर्क ऑपरेशन विद अ सिंगल एनर्जी सोर्स वी हैव सीन ऑल दिस कॉन्फ़िगरेशन सो इन अवर लास्ट टॉपिक अंडर इंट्रोडक्शन टू ई वी वी हैव सीन द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ एच ई सो वी हैव सीरीज एच ई वी पैरल एच ई वी सीरीज पैरल एच ई वी एंड कॉम्प्लेक्स एच ई वी सो वी हैव सीन द कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑफ ईच ऑफ दिस एच ई वी एंड हाउ दिस व्हीकल्स ऑपरेट एट स्टार्टिंग नॉर्मल ड्राइविंग एक्सेलेशन डी एक्सेलेशन बैटरी चार्जिंग एट रेस्ट बैटरी चार्जिंग वाइल ड्राइविंग ऑल दिस फीचर्स वी हैव सीन इन डिटेल वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन द काइंड ऑफ प्लेनेटरी केयर वाट इज नॉर्मली यूज इन दिस एच ई वीज सो इन कॉम्प्लेक्स एच ई वी इट्स वी हैव बोथ फ्रंट एंड रेयर ट्रांसमिशन बाई मीन्स ऑफ टू इलेक्ट्रिकल मोटर्स एंड वन आई सी इंजन सो वी हैव सीन द कॉम्प्लेक्स एच ई वीज विच आर कमिंग इन हाई एंड व्हीकल्स नाउ so there are many things we have discussed under introduction to ev and i hope uh, it has uh, given a good glance of this area to the listeners so in week 3 and week 4 uh, we started discussion on uh, vehicle dynamics so vehicle dynamics is important area to be understood for any vehicle for that sake whether it's ic engine vehicle or a electric vehicle we need to understand the dynamics of the vehicle a vehicle uh, normally needs to support a lot of opposing forces so one such force is uh, the force due to gradient so if you are going on a flywheel or a hill uh, there is a backward force uh, equal to mg sin theta which has to be supported by the energy source of the motor so we have opposing forces such as uh, the friction due to road conditions the tire pressure or the resistance between tire and road so this kind of forces also has to be supported these forces are known as rolling resistance force we have forces due to you know the wind conditions so when the wind uh, is opposing the vehicle it also provides lot of opposing force and this kind of force is a function of square of the velocity and uh, therefore it's quite heavy at high speed cruising operation so we have understood the different equation pertaining to these forces and we have also seen that how uh, the design of the vehicle is important so in ic engine based vehicle we really don't care for so much on the weight or the streamlining of the design but for electric vehicle that is very important because any uh, support uh, to these forces from the battery is uh, very critical to the range so we have derived those equation and uh, understood the features of each of them in a topic uh, known as tractive effort in our discussion uh, we have also seen uh, uh, simulation so in this topic uh, we have started simulation exercises so for each thing we'll try to simulate so we have seen uh, the different types of resistive forces which a vehicle has to support so and some of them are a function of gradient some of them are function of uh, vehicle design some of the features of the air density some of them are features of vehicle velocity so how each of these forces uh, you know vary with respect to these conditions at uh, different uh, uh, functions of uh, this parameter changes we have seen all these thing uh, by means of simulation so it's a useful exercise uh, that can be done to understand this forces in detail so there are two ways uh, the vehicle performance can be checked so one method is like when you are going a constant tractive effort So let's say the motoring torque is constant, and we'll try to understand uh, how the vehicle performance will be will come. So we have seen, uh, you know, is a so is a kind of uh, slightly complex uh, differential equation of velocity, and we have tried to uh, derive those uh, 
final solutions by means of different understanding and uh, we were able to derive uh, the velocity equation as a function of time, uh, distance equation, uh, power equation, average power equation, energy equations, all these equations we were able to derive and they were very handy for uh, understanding of the vehicle performance. So, we have also seen simulations uh, with respect to this uh, understanding of uh, dynamic equations with constant uh, tractive effort. In the real scenario, uh, the vehicle has to see a variable tractive effort. So, we all know that uh, we need to operate at high torque, low speed operation at starting and uh, lower speeds, but as we uh, go to higher speeds, uh, we may not be able to support the high torque due to the limitation of power rating of the machine. As well as once we reach uh, you know the uh, maximum speed, we uh, the vehicle torque requirements comes very low. So, all this understanding were further enhanced by uh, you know simplified equations with approximations which were quite true uh, at low speed operations, but they uh, try to uh, be quite uh, out of calculations when in high speed modes. So, we have uh, done detailed analysis uh, and modeling with variable tractive effort to electric uh, vehicle or vehicle dynamics. We have seen uh, uh, you know uh, the different types of driving cycles. So, why these driving cycles are important? So, let us say we have electric vehicle and we want to understand at what range uh, the vehicle can support for a full battery charge. So, then the, uh, the question is obvious that uh, it all depends on how you drive and what is your driving pattern. So, and we also know that uh, you know we have a different style of driving when we are going in a urban scenario. So, we have a lot of quick start stops and frequent stops, but when we are going on a highway mostly we uh, go on a constant speed and that to high speed. So, the range of the vehicle depends on the driving patterns. There are a lot of standard driving patterns uh, in US, Europe, Japan. So, we have seen uh, the variation of some of them such as a federal urban driving system or schedule and uh, the very popular one is uh, that SAE uh, J227 from the Japanese regulatory agencies. So, we have seen uh, that uh, how the uh, driving cycle will affect the range in some of our discussions. In the last discussion, uh, we have tried to uh, do the modeling of the vehicle dynamics in Simlink. So, Simlink is important tool and very useful tool which is popularly and frequently used by uh, researchers and students for dynamic simulations. So, we have done the modeling of vehicle dynamics such that it suits the uh, Simlink uh, tool and we have also demonstrated uh, the models developed and their performance for uh, constant FT operation, variable FT operation as well as uh, when the vehicle is uh, given different uh, driving cycles. So, all this simulation results also were shared and uh, at the end uh, I hope uh, the listeners uh, to this lectures uh, will be able to uh, appreciate uh, the knowledge shared in these lectures and will be helpful in their growth as professionals in this domain as well as 
uh, for academic purpose, uh, uh, teaching loads uh, or course credits. So, as an instructor, I have uh, tried uh, my best to uh, give uh, whatever uh, knowledge I have gathered and understood with all of you. So, we will uh, probably come with, come with electrical uh, vehicles course part 2 uh, in the coming futures, uh, where we will discuss uh, the next topic or the other topics in details. So, we have lot of topics which are yet to be covered such as uh, you know the batteries, the performance uh, evaluation of batteries, charging infrastructure modeling of electrical machines and the control of electrical machines, the understanding of power converters. So, lot of area are yet to be uh, discussed and uh, probably they will be covered in future uh, versions of this course. And uh, so, I thank the listeners for listening to all the lectures. Thank you.